Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Future of Finance is Green, an oxygen webinar supported by APIX. Uh, thank you so much for your overwhelming response. We have attendees from over 30 countries representing five continents. This really just goes to show that we are united in our interest and belief in working towards a better future for our planet. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm your host, Amrita Veer. I usually host the Green Room FinTech series, but today I am so excited to be here with changemakers in environmental sustainability and finance to discuss how, green fi or how finance is going green. First, we'll hear from five green tech entrepreneurs from Denmark, Sweden, and New Zealand about their startups and implications for finance and of course the environment. Then for the second half hour, I'll turn it over to three incredibly well-known thought leaders in finance and sustainability for what I'm sure will be a thrilling conversation. Uh, uh, let's jump right in with our panel of entrepreneurs. Uh, they've each got exactly four minutes to share with us what they do, how they do it, and importantly, how financial institutions can benefit by adopting their solutions. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Christian, CEO of Normative from Sweden, um, over to you to begin. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christian, and I'm the CEO of Normative. Uh, and our vision at Normative is to make known the sustainability impact of all economic activities on the planet. Because in order to avoid a global climate catastrophe, we need exponential climate action. According to the Paris Agreement, it means we need to slash our emissions in half every single decade. It's non-optional and non-negotiable. But in order to get there, we first need to monitor our emissions. Um, first, I mean, sorry to, to interrupt, but are the slides on because I can't see them? Yes. All right, perfect. So yeah, I think I should be at slide two or something. Um, so anyways, what, what we do at Normative is that we help our clients, which are usually mid-corp large companies, to account for their greenhouse gases. And the way we do that is to analyze their financial data, because embedded in the financial data is how much they have spent on fuel, utilities, transport, travel, and various raw materials. So if we can go to the next slide. So how it, how it works is that they upload their financial records, their invoices to normative. And based on that, we categorize the invoices, whether it's fuel, utilities or whatever. And then we uh, assign a greenhouse gas value to each activity. And based on that, we present actions uh, and then action plan for going net zero uh, that, that our clients can, can take and follow. Next slide. So by, by analyzing the data, they get, you know, access to, you know, dashboards and analytics where they can really see on a super granular detail the emissions of all of their projects, activities, and, uh, and so on. And, and more importantly, also emissions from the supply chain. Next slide. And uh, I mean, we, we have been around for several years. So we have over 100 large companies that are currently using the platform and together they have helped mitigate 0 0.5 megaton. And you probably don't know if that is high or low, but it, that is the equivalent to the entire annual greenhouse gas emission of a country like Gambia. I mean, it's a fairly small developing country, but the fact that we're having an impact on the level of a, of a country, I, I, we're you know, super excited. Uh, ab about that and uh, our, our clients really like the product for, for that reason. Um, so if you're interested in normative, please contact me uh, and uh, yeah, let's make the world a little bit better and greener, one greenhouse gas calculation at a time. Thanks a lot. 
Christian, thank you so much. I think we'll move to Carbon Click. Um, we've got Dave here from New Zealand. Hi, how are you guys? Um, so, hi, my name is Dave Rouse, and Carbon Click is uh, the business that I represent. What, what we're trying to do is to help restore the planet with a simple click. And we, we do that through e-commerce and through fintech. Um, and, and we would like to be, as a vision, the green button of choice that consumers click uh, to convert uh, their offset emissions, sorry, their emissions into uh, offset options, which genuinely help to restore the planet. Next slide. So there are three ways that, um, oh, sorry. Uh, there, there are two ways that we genuinely, um, <laughs> we're jumping between, sorry. So uh, on an e-commerce, it's a simple green button that appears on the cart. So Magento, WooCommerce, Shopify, and custom carts. Uh, just like when you're booking a flight with an airline, you can choose to click the green button or tick a box and that offsets uh, whatever it is that you're purchasing. And if you don't know what you've, uh, what your carbon footprint is for that item, like a lot of stores don't, um, we can help direct you to sustainability consultants or, or other um, platforms that can actually calculate that. But if, even if you don't know, it's quite easy to put a simple one or $2 offset because your customers know they've got an impact and they want to drive change. The big thing that we're driving behind this is the transparency of showing you exactly where your carbon dollar has gone and exactly where your, um, uh, what the impact of those projects is. Loyalty points. So we've just gone live with New Zealand's largest loyalty card provider um, called AA Smart Fuels. And this is the same concept as Visa cards. We're quite able to convert your points into offsets so that as you're spending, instead of earning other rewards, you're actually offsetting the impact of those um, spends. Um, we provide progress reports and education to show you why what you're doing is helping and that helps to reinforce the cycle. And from a business perspective, we make it easy for a business to put these plans in place. If a business put these plans in place, their customers uh, become great advocates of them, they feel empowered, and they continue to do more, uh, more, positive, um, uh, more positive purchasing, conscious consumerism, and so on. Next slide. So we know that offsetting is not the only um, way to uh, get us through this climate emergency. It's simply a second step. So we only work with businesses that are actively avoiding and reducing their emissions. And this is critical because we, we can't buy enough offsets uh, globally to fix the problem we're in. It has to be addressed by both uh, avoiding and reducing and then offsetting. And offsetting is that powerful tool that can do more than just restore carbon equation. It can actually uh, restore biodiversity and improve social outcomes as well. Next day, uh, next slide. So, so far, uh, we're only just under two years old and already we've had over 50,000 people use the platform. Uh, we've got 745 businesses online with us uh, displaying that green button. And uh, that, that equates to about 639,000 trees uh, that, that have been planted, supported, or uh, saved as a result, uh, as a result of clicking that green button, really. Next slide. Oh, sorry. So uh, hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight as to what we're doing. And Obviously, we'd like to talk to other businesses out there that want to partner with somebody that can help them on their sustainability journey from a perspective of if they're already doing the right things to reduce, uh, we can help them complement that and boost that, as well as bringing their customers into that journey. And that might be through climate friendly products or climate positive products uh, or carbon neutral products in collaboration with consultants, or it could be through uh, loyalty reward schemes or just consumers participating with the e-commerce site that you're uh, selling through. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much, Dave. We'll move on to 
Uh, Niels from Matter uh, from Denmark. Over to you, Niels. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for having me. I'm Niels, I'm co-founder and CEO of Matter. What we do at Matter is we help asset managers and asset owners understand the sustainability of their portfolio. We want to help them make capital worth more by getting a better perspective of how sustainable their portfolios are. Of course, climate environment is a big part of that, but sustainability and investment also concerns a range of other areas, ranging from human rights to governance, tax, and so forth. The next slide, please. The core logic for us is we want to utilize the wisdom of the world around us to get a better perspective of how companies are performing on environmental, social, and governance criteria. Um, we gather bo data both from what companies themselves report, but also from what the outside world is saying. One is through what we call trusted sources. So this is NGO, civil society, academia, think tanks, and other experts that are, have a qualified perspective on how companies are performing with regards to key ESG issues. We also read on average 65,000 articles from global media on a daily basis to understand whether companies are being praised or criticized for their actions with regard to sustainability. The important part here is for us, getting a balanced perspective um, in a world where there's a lot of different frameworks that investors have to take into account. We cover a global universe. Uh, we cover more than 14,000 companies, um, which means we analyze uh, portfolios for, for investors also with a global reach. Next slide, please. The data is made available in different ways, depending on the use case. So one is for an API solution, um, so that data can be integrated directly, for example, in your quantitative trading models, if you want to uh, utilize our sentiment data to uh, improve your portfolio. It can also be integrated uh, as you are UX elements if you want to uh, if you want to enhance your user experience. And we're also launching a digital dashboard for our clients to interact with our data in a simpler version. Next slide, please. What, our, what we're helping our chat clients do is help create, launch, monitor, and report on sustainable investment products. We launched the first two sustainable pension schemes in Denmark uh, three years ago and have attracted more than $100 million to those products. We've also launched the first digital platform in the world that allowed retail pension clients to track the current within their pension plans. And what we learned from that was we actually were able to build an entirely different value position towards our client that our competitors have. Over time, we started providing more and more institutional investors and professional clients with sustainability information and reporting on their, uh, their solutions. And as an example, we, we just published a project with Fidelity that we did together with IMAS Digital Acceleration Program um, to help them build a digital solution to measure the sustainable impact of an investment fund um, on ESG criteria and be able to communicate that to external clients, whether professional or private clients. Thank you very much for, for your time and I look forward to hearing about the other panelists. Niels, thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to uh, EarthBank with Tom, the CEO from Sweden. Tom, you're on mute. Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, I'm Tom Duncan, the CEO of EarthBank. It's great to be here and we look forward to sharing with you uh, how we're working with fintechs and banks to transform carbon and ESG reporting and sustainable finance. Uh, next slide, please. The core of what we do is delivering services to banks, fintechs, corporates, and SMEs on carbon and ESG reporting. So we deliver really precise reporting on these metrics using a range of data using open banking APIs, uh, also decentralized data points that are harder to get. And also we use satellite uh, remote sensing and monitoring in partnership with the European Space Agency. Uh, that's step one in our process. Step two is sustainable finance AI, where we help deliver sustainability loan suggestions to our bank and fintech partners. Uh, for the third step, uh, where there's unavoidable uh, emissions, we help audit uh, offsets from VCS, Gold Standard, and other platforms uh, and deliver them via an API into banks, fintechs, and corporates and merchants. Okay, next slide, please. Here are our products. Um, a key deliverable that we help scale is we deliver new green loan sales leads for our bank and fintech and lending clients. We report on the carbon and ESG impacts and we help revolutionize scope three through uh, continuous auditing 
of supply chains using the additionality of uh, satellite and remote sensing artificial intelligence. Uh, as I mentioned, step process uh, where we take uh, an organization from zero to 100 in a sustainability journey. We deliver an API, an SDK and white label product service to our clients. And our goal and mission is to scale up sustainable finance and carbon offsetting to reach the 300 gigaton carbon reduction that we need to um, avoid runaway climate change. Next slide, please. Part of what we're doing is using deep tech AI to revolutionize scope three emissions reporting and carbon offsets. Because right now what is happening is that many scope three emissions and supply chains are not accounted for. This includes water impacts, biodiversity impacts, social and ecological impacts. Uh, we revolutionize that and make it very easy to access this scope three emissions and impacts data. Uh, and we also deliver suggestions of how to actively reduce those impacts uh, throughout the supply chains, which eventually uh, the large corporates will need to address in order to maintain uh, their status of being a good corporate citizen. Uh, so what we've done is we've delivered an 18,000 fold increase uh, in efficiency in carbon verification with our deep learning models and is venture backed by the European Space Agency to drive investment and finance into nature-based solutions uh, and carbon drawdown. Uh, so the European Institute for Innovation and Technology that co-architected the Green uh, New Deal in, in Euro backed our decision metric for sustainable finance to meet the net zero goals. And what I should also add is that uh, we're the world's first continuously audited carbon credits API and scope three reporting. Uh, what this helps do is eliminate fuzzy data, de-risk loan and investment portfolios, whilst generating new green loan and investment leads to solve climate change. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the impact of clients, pilots or partners. Uh, for example, currently we're doing a pilot with Swedbank in the Baltic, Lithuania, which aims to enable corporate and SME customers to precisely quantify their sustainability impacts. The insights gained through the pilot could unlock sustainable finance opportunities to accelerate green growth for businesses. And this is across all loan portfolios. So many banks hold very large real estate portfolios, transport and energy portfolios, as well as the asset management arms. Uh, one example of the impact one of our partners is having a UN convention to combat desertification is the Great Green Wall of Africa and the Great Green Wall of India, which together could be $20 billion uh, worth of projects and draw down several billion tons of carbon. And we're working to verify and monetize the carbon for those on ground partners. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tom. I think last but not least, we have Lars, Managing Director of Agroclimatica from Denmark here. Thanks, Ambrita. Thanks, everyone. Greetings from Denmark. I hope everyone is, is staying safe. So now, uh, as I've heard them say, to something totally different. Um, next slide, please. Um, you know, we live in a world filled with, with, with challenges. Um, challenges in order related to the inclusion of farmers, into uh, the financial system, uh, challenges for banks and financial institutions to, you know, untap and and get get you know, untap the potential that that agriculture remains simply because they don't understand the risks that they they take by engaging in agriculture. Um, challenges related to climate change, uh, where you know crops of the past might not be suitable after crops of the future. Losses are significant all over the world. Uh, but also, you know, challenges related to the digitalization of, of agriculture uh, for, for better, um, you know, decision making, uh, but also to identify the climate smart crops of the future. You know, it's likely that we'll all keep eating. So we need to produce enough food. Next slide, please. So Agroclimatica is a risk platform that quantifies the agroclimatic risk in a load meaning that through the correlation of analysis of uh, climate, soil, uh, crops, uh, livestock, and good agricultural practices, it allows us to quantify numerically 
the risk of a credit application, meaning that we can, on a scale from one to 10, identify the risk for specific locations or a farm, for a specific activity, for a specific type of producer, for a specific period of time. If we look at how credits are assessed today, you know, financial institutions pull a financial risk score. So this speaks to a farmer's a historical willingness to pay. Uh, what we do as a supplement is that we quantify his future uh, ability to pay. So will he be able to produce uh, on this farm during this time uh, with a decent um, chance of success? So this is where we work, this is the space, and this is the value that we add for financial institutions. Um, when we look into the quality of data, we find that 92% of, uh, of the, the data that we emit is perceived as accurate by, by experts. We see that through, amongst the users, 91% feel better informed and 85% are willing to increase their lending into agriculture. So it's a way really to, uh, to, to channel and foment uh, lending into agriculture. Next slide, please. We are currently operating uh, in, uh, we're present in 10 different countries. I've uh, been very fortunate to find a niche where there's realized problems, but not any really good solutions. So we're running as fast as we can to offer our solution, not only in Latin America, now also in Africa, and uh, this year also in, in Asia, uh, working with a, our excellent team out of Nicaragua and, and, and Africa. Uh, the, the methodology is flexible. It can be adapted to any country or geographical area, you know, any type of crop and any type of animal. We work with a bunch of really solid partners, including, for example, Equifax, uh, and we're reaching more and more farmers and through the financial institutions every day. Next slide, please. So when financial institutions use agroclimatica in their operation, they not only get to increase their loan portfolio, but they also get to decrease their non-performing loan ratio because they, they cipher out, they, they manage to filter out the high-risk credit applications. And when we do this, we also gain transparency on a portfolio level, meaning, for example, that it allows on a strategic level to adapt credit policies towards certain area, geographical area, towards certain crops. But we also help to identify opportunities, so climate smart crops of the future. And it's easy to use, there are no investments, it's pay as you use, uh, and you don't need specialists in the front line, you don't need uh, agronomists to be the, the, the credit officers. You know, it's very flexible and easy to use. And through this information, uh, we then increase uh, and promote financial inclusion and digitalization. So really it's all about you know, everyone wins. Farmers wins because they increase access to finance, financial institutions increase their lending. Um, so as with all good business ideas, there don't have to be a trade-off between sustainability and profit. The really good ideas, they can do both. Thank you. Lars, thank you so much. Um, and thank you to all of the panelists uh, today for sharing uh, what your companies do are doing to tackle some really, really challenging problems.